This episode of Higurashi Satsu went batshit wild in the last five minutes. The first three-fourths of this episode is what you kind of expect from Satsu. Great content, twisting what we thought about the art previously. And then the last five minutes, like a sledgehammer, or in the case of Sadako, a bat to the head, and pretty much have her lose it. Have Sadako versus Sadako, the witch versus who she once was. The Sadako people recognized from the original series is fighting for control against the witch corrupted version of herself, and seemingly, based on what the imagery and gunshot and everything like that has to say, the Sadako that was still pure, or maybe had a chance at redemption, seemingly was just killed. And it kind of makes way more sense now, because originally I was thinking, because we know she's been snapping for some time, her eyes have been glitching, we've been getting this glass shattering effect every so often, this episode cranked it up a few notches. After this arc, she rapid fires killing, right? Her desire to keep Rika in the village has no plans behind it. So clearly she was going to snap. I just wasn't expecting it to literally be a ripping of Sadako's where it was a fight for control. And I think it'll be interesting because now my mind's racing even more because I was still believing that there would be a way for, I'm not sure if I'd call it redemption, but, you know, a way for Rika to save Sadako in some way. But if that version has seemingly been killed, I mean, unless they pull a loop-de-loop -loop and, you know, bring her back somehow, it would leave us to believe that, like, she's gone. So the only way I could think of her coming back is if something similar happens to Rika, where she's granted an ability that maybe allows her to make her own fragment or bring her back in some way. I'm not totally sure. Or maybe she's still going to be there deep down. Maybe the gunshot was more of like a metaphor, like she's been pushed back so far, but maybe that shard is actually going to be the key, right? Because she's still can use the shard to kill Looper, right? So what if she stabs Sadako with that shard? It kills the version we're seeing, which is crazy lunatic bitch, but that ends up returning the normal one, so when she loops again, everything's normal? Is that kind of like what we're building up to? Because supposedly leaks, uh, it's going to last past 15 episodes, but seemingly 15 episodes is what's been confirmed, so I'm wondering if maybe the leaks that people are hearing about might not actually be Higurashi, but another anime announcement. Not sure, but I mean, 15 episodes still seems like they could end it satisfyingly, so no idea, but like, this episode was great. I mean, seriously, the last five minutes we gotta talk about the most, I think, in this episode, because... It's interesting because I didn't think he would die there. I didn't think she would kill the uncle. And to see the idea of the fighting of her not wanting to hurt Tepe, I thought was interesting because I wasn't expecting that. Because, I mean, as a viewer watching, we can easily recognize that the uncle, as he stands, is clearly a different person than the abusive piece of shit he was before. But it's always up to the abuse victim if they want to forgive and forget. The thing that's made it very easy to root for Tepe is that as shitty as he was in the original timelines and stuff, I mean, comparing what Sadako has done to who's supposed to be her friends and family, Tepe looks like literally the Pope, right? Like, it's just very night and day. So to have her actually start to embrace him throughout the episode, there's like genuine moments sprinkled throughout where she actually is embracing and it almost feels like there must be some part of her who actually wants to just like accept that he's helping her and maybe she's starting to feel bad. And the idea of like pulling the gun and saying like, I'm going to kill you and then the arm restraint and to see how visibly destroyed he was because moments prior to the gun being drawn, he says, uh, basically it sums down to, I'm a piece of shit, I don't deserve this happiness, but it's the best part of my life. And to see her fight and how she's like, I don't want to do this, and then you have the witch, and she's saying, what are you talking about, I'm the real you, and the back and forth, and just, you really kind of get the best of both worlds in a way, because the people who've been wanting to cheer on Sadako for redemption can easily do that in that fragment segment. And the people who have said she's batshit insane can also do that. I mean, there's a moment where she brings up the fact, like, somewhere I must have gone wrong. And it's kind of laughable because you're like, well, of course somewhere you went wrong. You started killing people, right? But at the very least, there's an act of remorse there, even if, you know, it's, we should have been doing that after the first go-around. But still, you can tell that the pieces are being planted for either redemption down the line in the way of killing the witch but letting her come back, or having it be like, at the very least, if she doesn't come back, there was some acts of remorse before shit hit the fan. And like, honestly, I mean, there's two points in this episode that I didn't think they would commit to. The baseball bat, which I was like, 
That didn't go in the direction I thought, as well as the gunshot in the fragment world, because I thought it would make sense for her to be locked away, but I didn't think a full commitment. But now that the, the full commitment's there, it paints that rapid fire montage of Rika saying, five more go arounds and then I'm killing myself because I'm done with this shit. It paints it in such a more clear picture and comparing some of the brutal kills that Sadako does, I think it happens at one point, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a while since Go, that she kills Rika like in their home or whatever and she's just like ripping guts out. Like it's just painting a way better picture of why shit went down and Honestly, even before the craziness of the last five minutes, I loved this episode. I was already ready to say it was one of my favorite Satsus. But seriously, the way the detective kind of like manipulated the pieces, it's really, you kind of feel like you have pie on your face in a way. Because looking back from Keiichi's perspective of how things were going, and then to see the jump on Keiichi towards the end of this arc, it's like, how did that happen? Everything really went well. And the fact that the detective, you know, littering the garbage around, making it look like the villagers are provoking, bringing the child protective services to their home and convincing otherwise, passing the control over to him, everything was just so well planned. And I think I'm glad this is happening in this way because really comparing right after this arc and how uncoordinated it is, to have arguably the most coordinated plan to date because even though each arc leading up to her fully snapping, she didn't really have that good of composure. She lost her composure as each arc went on. But you can also argue up until the point of snapping, example this episode, the structuring and the planning of each like crazy massacre loop got better. And this arc seriously is night and day. And honestly... I'm willing to believe the last five episodes of Satsu are probably going to mirror the last five minutes of this week's episode because up until that point of shifting, both on a visual and narrative level, it's had a formula that I personally love, some people may not, but still, it's had a formula, but it almost feels like similar to Sonika's mind fully snapping, the narrative too has just snapped, and should they end Satsu in 15 episodes? I mean, if we remember back to Go, right? I mean, originally, we we knew it was going to be at least a core, and it wasn't until the midway point that more got announced. I am still going to put money on that Satsu is going to end at 15, but I wouldn't be shocked if either there's another Higurashi anime announced, or there's an Umineko anime announced, or another project announced. I wouldn't be shocked, because ever since Go started... I've been hearing rumblings about that and how it almost feels like they're going to build into that. So it'll be interesting. I mean, seriously, if people wanted shit to change in Satsu, this episode probably answered your prayers. I think next week should be the last episode of this arc. And honestly, with what just happened, I don't think anything's going to seem all that familiar after that crazy batshit and insane chaos adventure. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.